Hello students, welcome back to the course on Organizational Behavior, Individual Dynamics in Organization. So we are in the module 7 where we introduce you to the topic called motivation. In the previous class, if you recall, we have discussed on what motivation is, uh, what do you understand by intrinsic motivation, what do you understand by extrinsic motivation, uh, how motivation has evolved, etc. So in today's lecture, we'll look into the early theories that have come up in motivation. I'm Dr. Abraham Sirlaisag. I'm a faculty here at School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So today's theme for the lecture would be motivation can only lead to results. I repeat, motivation can only lead to results. Now let's look into motivation. Motivation is a complex and multifaceted concept that has fascinated researchers, psychologists and philosophers for centuries. Now, if you look into motivation specifically over the years, numerous theories of motivation have been developed to explain why individuals are inclined to act in a certain way that other factors influence their choices and persistence. Now, when we deal with motivation, there are certain theories of motivation examining the key principles, implications and real world applications in order to gain a deeper understanding of what motivates an individual per se. Now, our focus primarily is on why do we need the theories of motivation. The theories of motivation is basically required for one, employee performance and productivity. Why do we need people to be motivated every single time? Why do we need a set of uh, group to be vital in terms of motivation, in terms of their performance, in terms of their peak performance. Second important thing could be goal achievement. The ultimate need for any organization is to achieve the objectives it has set for itself. In terms of the individual per se, there are certain individual goals. As I've always already mentioned it in the previous lectures, there is something called a strategy intent. Strategic intent is where you are, your aspirations, your goals as an individual is in agreement, is in tandem with the organizational goals. So goal achievement is yet another primary aspect where you need motivation. Another could be education and learning. There are individuals who are, who are very keen on understanding, learning. In the previous lecture, if you recollect, I had taken an example of a mastery climate and versus a performance climate. Mastery climate as research claims is a, a better suited for organizations which are looking into something on a, on a research front, on a creative front, etc. So education and learning is yet another factor which warrants the need for a proper motivation from the individual. Another aspect could be personal development. Now there could be situations where individuals are passively moving from one post to another within the company. They are being productive in the company. But what about the personal growth of the particular individual? What about the personal growth of the particular employee? Is the company concerned about it? Is the individual concerned about it? What is the motivation that is triggering the individual and the company to look into the development of the particular individual? Now, the organization should understand that the development of that particular individual is ultimately going to help the company. And the individual should be looking at the fact that there, all these organizations, the moment you feel, the organization feel that you are redundant to the organization, you will get replaced. So you have to be on your toes, learning new things, understanding new things, and personal development is the key in those situations. Leadership and management is yet another important aspect where motivation comes into picture. Nobody can be a leader without motivation. There could be situations where you are accidentally placed as a leader for some time. But if you want to be a successful leader, if you want to be a real leader and lead people from the front, lead the organization from the front, lead the group from the front, you need to be motivated without doubt. And the final aspect is social and cultural context. There are certain situations where being a human being, you are a social animal. There are situations where you are to be guided in a social setup. You cannot work individually. There are uh, group commitments. There are situations which require organizational 
team performance in terms of task completion which is uh, task is where uh, uh, which is uncertain task could be a bit complex so all these situations warrant individuals to work in certain groups so there are certain social and cultural context which also trigger or which also underscore the need for motivation so these are some of the some of the requirements or the need for theories of motivation when we look into the theories of motivation we can classify them we can distinguish them into two one is the early or the content theories and second could be the contemporary or the process theories one word before going into the next slide is that early and content theory when you're looking into the content theory per se it is more static in nature Motivation is considered more static. It, it looks into the needs of the individual. It looks into the requirements of the particular employee within the organization. It looks into the, the, uh, the aspirations of the individual within the organization. But again, it is established as a static principle. Whereas when you look into the process of the contemporary theories, it is more dynamic in nature. The rather than the needs there are certain things which are keeping on changing keeping on updating keeping on improvising so addressing those needs those aspects would be the process theories in motivation so content versus process theories what's the difference mainly it is with respect to the focus as i've already mentioned what is the focus is the focus on static needs or is the focus dynamically changing what is the perspective of your understanding the perspective of the motivation that you are looking into the application of the theory of the mo the concerned motivational theory in the relevant stream in the relevant field and finally example so these are some of the certain aspects which differentiate the content versus process theories and will explain certain theories in detail the first and the foremost and the most importantly discussed and i would say a bit misunderstood theory is his hierarchy of needs theory by Abraham Maslow. Now, now most of the people who have at least taken a course in management, even a crash course in management in HROB will certainly be able to understand or certainly be aware about Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which ranges from physiological to safety to love, belongingness, esteem, and self-actualization. Now, let's look into the physiological, the first important aspect. It includes every single physiological element, and I have listed down some of them. From hunger, from thirst, shelter, sex, and other, all bodily physiological needs are part of this physiological aspect. So, that, that makes the, the base of the pyramid, that makes the foundation of the hierarchy of the needs. One segment of needs is satisfied. Once one array or one, one fundamental block of the needs are satisfied, individuals move to the next phase. That's what the, the Maslow's contention, that's what the Maslow's theory is all about. So, basically, the physiological needs talks about your hunger, thirst, all the physiological needs associated. Once the physiological needs are satisfied, it goes to the safety aspect. When you're looking into safety, we are actually looking into safety and protection from physical and emotional harm. So it's not only concerned with the physical harm. Sometimes you feel that physically there might be there might not be any, any issues, but there might be emotional damages that are caused. So security or the safety also looks into those aspects where things are physical as well as emotional. Once that is satisfied, it moves to the third, which is called as love, belonging, social needs, where you are looking into affection, belongingness, acceptance, and friendship. Now, this is also critical. Most of the people tend to reach till the social need, where they are striving now for affection, for belongingness, it could be within the organization, it could be within the, within the group, within the team, within the home, within the society, within the community, within the country. Even within the country, people are searching for affection, searching for belongingness. So there could be a certain level of uh, a stagnancy at this particular point. Most of the people tend to be stagnant at this particular point. And if somebody is satisfied with the affection, with the belongingness, acceptance, he may go, move to or she may move to the fourth one, which is esteem. 
Esteem talks about internal factors such as self-respect, autonomy, achievement and external factors such as status, recognition and attention. So this is something which is more vital when it comes to an individual in an organization. Many a time the needs, still the social needs are satisfied and this is a fact. Most probably physiological safety needs are always satisfied. If you are in a healthy organization, the social needs are also satisfied to a great extent. But are your esteem needs satisfied? When you are talking about esteem needs, you have to understand, are you getting the self-respect you are requiring or you need? Are you getting it in your organization? Are you getting the autonomy with which you can work? Or every time there is somebody who is ordering you, so somebody is bossing you around. Are the external factors like status, you are getting a particular status because you are associated with a particular company. You are getting a particular position within the society because you are associated with that particular uh, company. The recognition that it brings, the attention that it brings within the society that being a part of this organization is creating that that particular room of esteem needs is that satisfied once that is satisfied people move to the the last one self-actualization now I'm not going into the detail and the extension of the Maslow's theory but I would certainly try to make a clear understanding of self-actualization need and I certainly believe at this point this is the point where most of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory is misunderstood Self-actualization is supposedly the drive to become what we are capable of becoming. It includes growth, achieving our potential and self-fulfillment. In, in one of the earlier classes of this course, I have categorically mentioned that self-actualization is realization of your full potentialities. Whatever you can achieve based on the available potential you are having, are you in a position to achieve? Many a time we see that self-actualization as some, something which is being understood as uh, without any, any, any need for any worldly pleasures or something like that. That understanding is not fully right, nor it is fully wrong also. So the explanation part would be, when you are engrossed in a particular job, which commands your entire set of potentialities, which your entire set of your uh, talent, your skills, your knowledge, your abilities, and you are working in, 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 in a level where you don't understand that you are working to your 100%, your fullest potential. You don't have time for other worldly pleasures. So it is an extrapolation or it is an extension of Maslow's theory. So self-actualization need not be a disengagement from all worldly pleasures as it is sometimes misunderstood. Rather, it is the achievement of your 100% potentialities. You are able to put your full effort, 100% of your effort into the particular job to realize what you are talented for or what you are made for. So that is Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs theory. Starts from physiological, moves to safety needs, goes to love, belonging, affection, affiliation, moves to self-esteem, self-respect and finally leads to self-actualization. Now there is yet another important theory which was given by Douglas McGregor in 1960, Theory X and Theory Y. Now Theory X has a, a certain understanding that individuals are per se lazy, they are disobedient, they are disoriented. So there is always a need of pressure or there is always a need of discipline that is to be enforced on them. So there is a level of coerciveness, there is a grade of coerciveness that should go into every single individual. So it does not consider individuals in their basic nature as hardworking, in their basic nature as somebody who is prompt towards working. So Theory X is more top down where the management is authoritarian and is more repressive and goes in for tight control and procedures are limited whereas it leads to a depressed culture. You are always somebody is monitoring you. 
somebody is breathing behind your neck every single time. So the basic premise is that individuals per se are lazy, they need to be taught a lesson, they need to be given proper directions, then only they are going to work. Whereas theory Y on the other hand takes into the consideration that individuals per se are very hard working. They are born to work, they, are, they, they like their work, they are passionate about what they are doing and this is what the fundamental principle of theory is. So when you are passionate, when you are already into the work, you don't need any external direction for working, you don't need any particular uh, person to actually pinpoint do this, do that, then you are into theory why. You are in a situation which is more bottom up. You are in a situation which is more liberating and developmental. The achievement and continuous improvement is the key that is going to happening and you are there in an enabling work environment. So this is what, what you mean by theory X and theory Y by Douglas McGregor. Now let's discuss a case study. Rohit Narang joined Apex Computers in November after a successful stint at Zen Computers, where he had worked as an assistant programmer, Rohit felt that Apex offered better career prospects as it was growing much faster than Zen, which was a relatively small company. Rohit joined as a senior programmer at Apex with a handsome pay hike. He joined Aparna Mehta's five-member team. Time and again, Rohit found himself thinking of Suresh, his old boss, as of how he had been such a positive influence. Aparna, on the other hand, even without actively doing anything, had managed to significantly lower his motivation levels. While she was efficient at what she did and extremely intelligent, she had neither the time nor the inclination to groom her subordinates. Her solutions to problem were always correct, but she was not willing to discuss or debate the merits of any other ideas that her team might have. She did not hold the team down to the deadlines nor did she ever interfere. In fact, she rarely said anything at all. Rohit gradually began to lose interest in his work. It had become too mechanical for his taste. He didn't really need to think. His boss had all the answers. He was learning nothing new and he felt his career was going nowhere. As he became more and more discouraged, his performance suffered. From being someone with immense promise and potential, Rohit was now in danger of becoming just another mediocre techie. Now this case looks into two big issues. And the first one is motivation and another is need for recognition. Having got an idea of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you would definitely appreciate when I say that this is a subset of motivation. So basically this case looks into the single aspect of motivation where the primary aspect or the element is the need for recognition. The question is, what according to you were the reasons for Rohit's disillusionment? Now, if you look into Maslow's hierarchy of needs, his self-actualization is a critical aspect that comes into play. He had certain potentialities, as already mentioned in the case. He was a person with immense potential, the immense promise. He was very much successful in his previous company. He had the the potential or the talent to excel which is not utilized to the fullest extent in the present company. So what happens for Rohit is that he does not feel that Aparna creates a working environment, a working environment in which he can grow and work towards actualizing his full potential. This can be observed in how Rohit felt disappointed when he realized that Aparna does not employ an empowering style of leadership like his old boss. Many a time in the case itself, you must have observed that even though there are different opinions, there is lack of psychological safety. There is lack of an element of psychological safety where people can raise their opinion, people are free to raise their opinion and there is discussion on that. Rather, Aparna takes her decision as the final even goes ahead without any discussion. So his expectations were also high because he believed that the new job was going to be his dream job that would launch his career. When this didn't happen, Rohit's illusion, rather disillusion, that he had made the right choice when he left his old company dissipated and he had to face the cold reality that his new workplace was a dead end. So many a time, if you look into motivation, if you look into motivation, many a time we are in the place of Rohit. 
we tend to see or we tend to hope that the grass is greener on the other side and we jump to another organization. We don't understand what we have left back. We don't understand what a good boss we had, what learning environment we had, the psychological safety we had in the previous organization. Many a time that recognition comes only when we understand the present reality. When we understand in our present organization, we are nothing but caged birds. We are not given the sufficient freedom to express ourselves, to give the requ required opinion, to give the required solutions. You can have a different perspective to the problem. You can bring a creative solution to the existing problem. But if your boss is not willing to listen, if the, your boss is not giving you a platform to give the idea, to raise the idea so that this idea could be nurtured and could be taken forward, then you are at a peril, you are at a losing end. The motivation phases out, the mot motivation goes out in such a way that you don't feel to work there anymore. So motivation happens to be one of the most critical aspect when you're working in the organization. You look back to the content theories, you are going to look into the process theories, everything underscores the very fact that motivation is the only aspect that can lead you to the results. On that note, we'll end today's lecture. Please take care. See you all in the next class. Bye-bye.